Hello, good um, afternoon. My name is Sergio Santos. I'm a UBFX, UBFX compositor supervisor. In basically, to everyone to know what I do, normally I explain that when you have a green screen on front of you on the movies, everything you replace it for another image. And my job is to ensure that uh, this composition is done as correctly and as better as possible. Okay. I'm sorry for my English, <laughs> but I need to practice a lot. And I'm going to be talking about my work at uh, Many Heist, La Casa de Papel, the worldwide known Netflix show that started, that is from Spain. And if you never saw the show, be careful. I'm going to talk a lot of this. I'm going to show a lot of image. I'm going to tell you the stories that if you didn't see it, it's going to be a problem. OK? So I'm from Portugal. I study audiovisuals in Castelo Blanco, where I wanted my idea was to be a video editor and motion graphics. But then I went up going to Murcia when I finished the university. And I study and I was there working and I started working on do post production. That where it was when I learned what was visual effects were. I've been working there for almost 10 years. So with I started as a junior composer and with time I ended up being supervisor. That that's what I most do nowadays. Do is a small company in the south of Spain. It was now uh, we have grown a lot with the past years. We start doing publicity, but uh, with time we, we went to go and do movies and series and for different platforms. We already work for Netflix, Movistar, Amazon. We still do publicity, but now we are more focused on fiction movies and series. Uh, we have, we start, uh, for example, Money Heist with a very low team. We were three or four in the first chapter of Money Heist. But with the continuum of the years, we end up doing the final season with around 40 people. We grow alongside the, the series. This is one of our installations now. This is this, the, in Murcia. Now we have another one in Madrid. And we work with people uh, worldwide. Now, thanks to COVID, that allows to people to work remotely. We, can, uh, we have people working in different cities of Spain. I am in Portugal at this moment living. Uh, in England, in India, Egypt, Holland, a little bit around the world, we have teams. And basically, that <laughs> we work with a software called Nook. That is the, the standard for do visual effects. And now back to the many heist. We are working on the series since since the first season. We start working on it. The first release was in 2017, but we start at half of 2016. At the beginning, the season, the series was to and was released only in Spain, only on Antena 3, a broadcast TV in Spain. Only two seasons. At the end of those two seasons. It was supposed that the many heist is, was over, but luckily it enters to Netflix and there was a boom and it was famous worldwide. So after that, it, we came with the third season, fourth and fifth that was released let, last year. In first season, we at the beginning, it, it was supposed to be a series with uh, less uh, small effects, not big uh, stuff and and that's what we did. And with the continues of the story, when we went to work for Netflix, the, the people that wrote the, the scripts decided we should go bigger and bigger and bigger on the series. So, for example, in first season, we had around 800 shots to do in VFX in first uh, season and second season. And third, this grows. And final season, the fifth one was madness. We had a lot of shots to do because the script required that because the audience want to see more and more and, to, uh, it, uh, and the series needs to be more spectacular than the first one and the second and the fifth needs to be because it was the final season needed to be more, even more spectacular than the other uh, four before. So we did a lot of work on this one. So now my job as the supervisor consists in supervise every compo. Basically, that when we have a green screen, 
and the comper this, uh, do the comp. I supervise everything is on place, the colors, the tracking, and so that the final result is the best as possible. When the, we receive the shots from the client, I am the one that distribute that between the, the people that is going to work. You're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do that. I'm also responsible to try to keep the due date. We always have tight schedules to do the things. Only about, we you think that we have one year to do all of this? No. For one episode, we have more or less three weeks, one month in best cases. Sometimes only two weeks for doing an entire episode of two under shots, two to three weeks. So um, we have to be very careful and you have to organize a lot of stuff so that everything can stay in place. I also do meetings with clients to understand what they want. And in case they want something that is not possible, I have to give them an uh, answer, a solution for, for the problems. And now this is the, the demo from the first season we did. As you can see, we did a lot of screens, monitors, especially some cleanups of uh, uh, that of problems that occur during the recording. That we we do a lot of cleanups. When you think about the show of visual effects, you always think about dragons and spaceships and lots of those things. But sometimes, we what we most do on this kind of shows is cleanups, cleaning things from mistakes that happened during the, the recording. In this first season, as I told you, we did the sh visual effects were not as bigger as in the end. We did a lot of uh, screens and a lot of uh, fire arms because of course you cannot use real fire arms on set. And even if you use blanks only to produce fire and, and smoke, that's not uh, very common to use because it produces sound and the actors then, if they have a dialogue, it uh, mix with the sound of the dialogue, so you have to cut and then do it again. So All the shots, 99% of the shots of the show were made in post-production. If in 25 seconds, uh, if uh, in one second, that is 25 frames, you see 10 shots, we did all one by one in a big sequence, and we have a lot. We did a lot of this. It was a uh, hard work that we have to do, but with time you get used to it and you were able to find uh, workarounds to make it uh, faster to do it. And we also did a lot of screens. We do screens, we can do real, insert a real image, but normally we don't do that because sometimes when we are going to shoot the, on this set, the image that go inside of the screen is not was not already recorded. So sometimes we record the, the first scene in one day and the inside of the screen five days after. So we used to go to green screen so that, so that uh, everything works. On the left side, we have the first season. It was broadcast on Spain, small production, less money. Right side, we have uh, worldwide famous Netflix and everything. We went from doing one scream on a table, small stuff with professor crossing around, to doing 15 screens at once, all blue screens, or four beneath or 10 beneath green screens, and continues. The show went from small things to bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. S uh, this is the demo from the third season. And you already can see that we start bigger with doing 3D objects, in this case a Zeppelin, that were in the first season we didn't have nothing of 3D. And we also went to do shots in water tank in London, in Pinewood Studios. And the big problem of that water tank was that uh, the gold bars shrank, and that we have to clean everything and rebuild everything in post-production. Big chroma keys on screens. These ones were on the streets of Madrid, near Gran Via, in Plaza Callao. The big set I ever work on with green screens, because they green screens of the size of a building. That was for me at that moment was very impressive. At this point, it's just another day. 
as you can see in this series, we have more integration of 3D elements with real elements. Helicopters, more 3D and more 3D. So comparing with the last season, we did a lot of 3D. As I was saying, we continue doing monitors. Uh, the sequence with guns were even bigger. There was not only one person or two shooting. At this point, there was 10 against 10 shooting, big machine guns, small machine guns, grenades. We did most of the explosions also and breaking walls. There was real material, weapons, real FX effects that uh, or were on set, but we have to make more things to it, because if not, uh, they will be a little bit poor. But now I will focus on how to create an effect. In this case, the Zeppelin sequence that was uh, at the beginning of th third season. As all big uh, sequence of um, effects, we start with, uh, with a storyboard. Just to understand what was written on a script, we pass it to paper, we have the storyboard, and we can start to see all the shots that we are going to need during the part of 3D production. And to understand if we need to cut something, to add more things. Then we went to drawing, to um, concept art. This is one of the many draw, draws we did. And this was the one that was approved. Then we went to production, and but when we arrived in 3D production, we realized that uh, what was good in the draw, drawing was not good on 3D because, for example, the box beneath, it's a little bit weird, so it didn't fit what you normally see in a Zeppelin. So this is not the final version, but this is a way that we use to measure things, to compare scales. We start to, to do also a 3D storyboard and to do animatics of all the sequence to see where we can put the, um, the Zeppelin flying in the city of uh, Madrid, in the streets, because this process was done a little bit earlier than the real shooting of the real streets. So with this, the director could already understand the shots he could do and how to s solve the problems. And now, and this was the final Zeppelin. It was white, not red. The, the, the box beneath the cabin that was beneath was more natural. This one seems that can transport people, the other one no. But this was at least at the end, this was the final shot. And we can see here the final result of uh, two shots. In the one beneath, we can see that the day we went to record, and this is one thing that you cannot control when you are outside of a set, outside of a comarchy, you cannot control the weather. You can try to predict, but you cannot. So in this day, we shoot with a blue sky, with the sun and everything. And in the final day, so then we in post-production, we need to remove the sky, the blue sky, put some clouds, so that there was some continuity on the shots. And this is one of the things I have to do as supervisors to guarantee that there is a continue Continuity between every single shot, UVFX sh uh, shots, with the real thing. So there will there could not be a one with clouds, the other one without clouds. So I have to maintain uh, currency during all of this. In this sequence of the Zeppelins, the, if you didn't show, see the show, they sorry, uh, they release money. There is a moment where they release money from the um, the cabin that is attached to the Zeppelin. All of the money that is falling on the upper picture is 3D. We did everything in 3D. The people that is beneath is also 3D. It's a crowd system uh, because it was easier than put a lot of people there screaming, running around. But the image below is with real people, with real money falling. And I put the word fake there because the part, this one is all fake because it's 3D. But this one was, everything was real there except the money. The money, we, were, we impressed the money, 50 euros bills, the same color, the same image, image, everything. But because to guarantee that no one used that fake money in other places, we wrote the word fake on the bills. It was an amazing idea, but then we have to check 
every single frame, every single build that was falling from the sky to guarantee that there was no fake written there. So we have to erase every single build that was falling from there. This was weeks and weeks reviewing every single frame from the, the show, and this was a little bit madness. Uh, you can see there the down image that there is a falling a lot of real bills, checking e every single one of them. Uh, menace. This was the big set that we have that day. Then we replaced all the comma keys for image from the professor and the acting. For better integration of the Zeppelin on set, we used this system. We take a 360 picture of the place. We did it on the ground. We did it on top of buildings. And with this image, we generate a um, HDRI picture, uh, high dynamic range. Uh, I forget the last letter. High dynamic range picture, missing something here. When you use that image to use that image to illuminate the Zeppelin, so that the Zeppelin has the same light as the in the real situation that we have here. Okay. So now I'm going to jump to season four, and you can see that. It's going to be bigger on level of effects. We have more 3D shots, full CG shots. In this show, you can see that uh, we start to have bigger and bigger chromas. We no longer have only chromas on the, the green screen and blue screen on screens. We start to have this also in the real actions with cars, with actors, or with everything on the back is uh, green screen, or this situation where we need to make a set extension of the place where the professor, professor was. Even a single ball was made in 3D because it's the only way to ensure that the ball goes directly to the center of the camera because if you try to do it with an actor, you can be there hours and hours and you cannot solve the problem. Uh, okay, we continue with shots. This is a thing that we did all over the whole season. There were a lot of gunfights and everything and explosions and we did a lot of this. What I was talking about, full chroma sequence. We record everything in Madrid, but we put then the people in the chroma allow us to do that in the Sahara Desert or everything. And that's it. Uh, green screen, blue screen, why you'd use, we use this? Mainly because of uh, the tone skins. They are the complementary colors of, the, um, of our tone skin that we are more red. So this helps us to separate, uh, separate from the background, also because of the air. Normally, no one has green air, bl blue air. In case you have uh, blonde air, it's better to go with the uh, blue screen. Not always, but most of the times. And every time we have to shoot, we have a sequence, we have to think everything right. If you go for a park, there is a lot of grass, trees, and everything. We cannot go with the green or we could, but then we have more rotoscope work after. And so we have to think everything, planning everything before, like we did in the Zeppings, storyboard, analyze all the problems we are going to have, and to choose the correct color for the background. We even, there was a few sequence where we use red as a background color, because the scene was very red, and putting green or blue, it was going to be the problem, so we use red, but uh, we have a good contour of the arm. There was nothing red on the person, so it was no problem. So now we also start doing virtual set for vehicles, big, big vehicles. In Money Heist, we use four. In another series that we did, Sky Rojo, with another four, we put the car on, the, on, set, on big screen, storyboard as always. We organize everything, even the shots, the movements of camera. Everything is very programmed on this because we cannot go wild to a shooting like this because time is money. And here you can see the final result. On set, 
and the end. Because on set there is a lot of reflections of the of the lights on set, the people, the cameraman, we remove all the glass and we replace everything on 3D. Okay? So in this way we can have the control of everything that we are doing. The reflections on the street, if there is a shadow of a tree, uh, what you are seeing. You can see on the light there that there is something green. That green is the trees that are passing on the street. To do this, we have our pajarito, our little bird, as we pajarito in Spanish, little bird for English, that is a small vehicle. It's this height with five cameras on top of it. This allows us to have the, um, a lower point of view of the cameras. So if you put in a normal car, the cameras will be like this. So they don't have the correct point of view of a person driving a car. And these five cameras, what they do, they record the entire view, 360. Then we stitch this into one single image. So we don't see the cut between them. And we implement this inside of Nook. So if the cameraman is inside of the car recording, he can be recording in front of you and rotate the camera and we always have image surrounding the vehicle. We don't, um, in the past, we only do one plate in front of the car. If we do this, there was no image. We need to find another one to try and trying to join everything, which was a little bit messy. But with this system, we can do a 360 shoot and we always have image according to that. Okay, so in this case, another example, no windows, no crystals, we put a 360 degrees background on the backyard. Then we put the, the mirrors and all the car in 3D. <coughs> and now let's go for the last season, the big one. <coughs> the first season, as you can see, here we start with full CG shots that we didn't have until this moment. Full CG with FCG, F real in this case, <coughs> is FF. The scenery got bigger and bigger, a lot of cars. So this is the final season. So you need to understand final season. We need to we need to do it everything bigger and bigger and bigger more full backgrounds. We even got asteroids uh, going to the Earth, exploding on, on the planet. When I read the first time the script for this, I called my boss and I was like, are you sure we are going to do this? Because <coughs> this has nothing to do with money heist, following things from sky. Why, why are we doing this? Yes, there is a story behind this. And we did it. Also recreating a lot of vehicles. In this case, it, this was this uh, shopper. It, would, it had a good end result. We do a lot of this, as I said before, a lot of cleanups of a uh, lot of things, cables. In this, in this case, there was that stretcher there that was not supposed to be there, and we need to remove it. As we can see, asteroids, full helicopters on 3D, full background chromas, explosions, the Antarctica, and more things that you have a lot of screens. The final season was the total madness. And this is just an example of how many shots we have per chapter. We have four, five, above 200. And think about it, in only three weeks. Three weeks to one month per, per episode. Sometimes they overlap. So thankfully, to this season happens during COVID, so we have a little bit more of time. Sometimes we have uh, some breaks in the shooting, so we have more time to, to do the effects. But 
this was the average. Three weeks for, for the entire, entire episode, a little bit more sometimes, but not more than that. So I'm already finished, so I want to finish with this one. This is a good example of a, what a composer do, because 3D departments send us. People think that everything comes from 3D and we don't do much, but no, they send us all the material by separated. The lava, we need to put a little bit more bright on the lava. For example, the smoke is not uh, 3D smoke. The smoke is a real smoke that we record, then we, we put inside of a 3D scene. Uh, the flares, the comets, the clouds on the background, I believe they are also real. They are not 3D. And the mountains are also real. So we grab 3D elements. We grab 3D elements and mix with real elements. Jesus. <coughs> this is the shot. Oh. Okay, it's not working. It was supposed to play the video, but we already saw the... You can? Okay, it's not working. No, 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 no. So that shot over there, uh, it started with, this time was not a storyboard. This one, I like to show this one because I did it. One weekend at home, I was two hours and I say, we need a good example of how to create this sequence. And the example that I create was this thing, completely equal to the final shot. So this was... Uh, animatic of, of the, what is at the end was going to be this thing. So it works and everyone was happy. And now I only have a few examples of what we create. In this case, uh, the full, almost full CG will work, except the clouds, they are real. We starting for doing a scanner of the real platform. We use a drone that take a lot of pictures around the platform round up all the sizes. We also take it by hand. We join all the pictures and we make that rough 3D. The technique is called photogrammet photogrammetry. And after we clean all the imperfection, you can see that we cannot use that. We end up with something like this that we need to finish using 3D elements. And this is without the final comp and that's the final shot after everything was on place. And this uh, sequence work uh, really fine. The shopper, also all in 3D. Sometimes we use the real shopper, other times we use the real 3D. Uh, the, 3D. the 3D was well, always, one that was flying, the other one, this one, and the real one was well, is always when it was on the ground, okay? And that sequence, real mix with 3D, and we give the sensation that this was in the Arctic, Arctic. On the reality, I believe this was in Tenerife, in, in an island near Africa, but we put them some ice and it was good. And to finalize, uh, I want to show you the, what we mean for cleanup and mess that happens during the shoot. In this case, it was supposed to be everything like this, but when the gold bars entered in the water, they shrunk. And we have to replace almost every one and single gold bar in the every shots, around 20, 25, 30, 30 shots. It took us about one month, 12 to 15 people work on this daily, only cleaning this. It, we did a lot of 3D shots, everything was amazing, but the worst part of the job was, I believe, of the five seasons, it was cleaning this, because this was very, very hard. And that's all from my part. This is the logo that we create for our company, for the shirts that we do at the end of the, every season of our works. We are the monsters, the compers. We are the monsters because we work in very dark places. So we uh, call us ourselves the gargoyles because we don't see the light many hours in low light. So we made the mix between the gargoyles and the many heists. And, and that's it. I hope you like it, and if you have any questions. Uh, Anyone have questions? Yeah. Hi, uh, thank you so much for your talk. 
Um, I have a question. Other than time, what is the biggest challenge of working on a, such a big production uh, compared to working on a smaller production the first few seasons? Uh, the problem between working in a smaller production and a bigger one? Yeah, like what are the challenges that you faced other uh, than time? The worst part it is timing, time, because in a smaller production you may have you have small time, but you have less things to do. But in this one, is that you have a lot of things to do in very short time. For example, with the pressure of COVID, we start good with the final season, but we have a due date. We are going to deliver many heists, and this day, and COVID was like, we cannot work, we cannot work, but this that didn't move. This didn't move. There was one season where that happens. I don't know if it was the third or the fourth and that we need to move the due date a little bit, the final date, because it was madness. It was impossible because of all the things that were entering and new ideas and new ideas. The worst part is that, is the time you have to do things. You don't have an entire year to do one shot. No, you have, that's the worst part because other things are challenges. Okay, let's do asteroids. You go, you study, you see re reference, you talk with 3D, they start doing something, from frame, same, uh, first sketches, you solve the problem. Do 3D cars. 3D, you do that. Compers, we need a 360. You study a little bit, you solve that. Time, you cannot change that. You can try it, but it's always a problem to, do, to deal with time. That's the more challenging thing. OK, thank you. I have just another question. Um, how many people work on such a big production? Because you talked about a lot of work. OK, in first season, for example, in the first chapter, we, all, we were three. It was me, uh, my supervisor, and an intern that we have at that moment. For around the last chapter of final season, the company we were around, around 52, between different departments, production, uh, compositors, 3D, match movers, um, matte painting, all the areas, you need to grow a lot. That's why in the first season we are doing shootings and... But although we start with three, but at the second uh, episode, we are already 10, because we need more people, because that was a little bit. But in this case, we are around these people. We could be more or we could be less. I know production that with same work, I have less people and others that have more, 10 times more, 10 times, no, two or three times more people working, so... In this case, we were more or less this. And those people do the storyboard, like everything from the storyboarding to everything else? Uh, if I do, for example, if I do the storyboard? Yeah. No, yeah. I don't draw. <laughs> <laughs> I do the animation for the comets. I can do that animating. I don't draw, I can do something, but uh, we have people that uh, oh, okay. do yeah, that. That was my question. <laughs> yeah. We try to divide the, I can do a lot of things, but we try to, be specific on one work. If you are doing a lot of things, sometimes that's not a bad, uh, good idea because you can mess up things and then you don't have time to, to be proficient in some, th some things. So we try to divide a little bit the areas. You are doing this, I'm doing that, and don't mix. I can help, but try not to mix a lot. So we have okay. people for every yeah. thing. Yeah, thank okay. you. Hi. Are you listening? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever need to remove like a brand that does not uh, support the movie or something like that using effects like uh, on the cleaning part? Okay, if we have to remove brands from... Yeah, for example, like uh, you are, have a car which belongs to a, like, uh, yes. I don't know. We I don't know if with cars we did that, but we did with a lot of things, especially when we are recording on the street. For example, I forgot to, to talk about this, but we record here in Lisbon in the final season. The season was worldwide, so we recorded in lots of places. One of them was in Lisbon. In Lisbon, we had to remove a lot of uh, signs from the streets. For example, the person that is selling his, um, selling his house, we have to remove the phone number so that people don't call that phone number on the series. That happens. People see a phone number on the series, we, we have to delete something or change the number because people that is watching call that number. I don't know why, I never did that, but people do that. So in Lisbon we did have to did a lot of those things. And yes, and other brands, uh, we have to remove it. But uh, I tell you, that's the least thing we remove from the, 
from the show. Any more questions? There's nothing. No? Thank you so much, Sergio.